Good day assets, this is Sermon Giet and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss how the accounting is done, what are the different steps in the process, transaction analysis and journalizing and how it is done, it is right here. Do you still remember the definition of accounting according to AIPA or American Institute of Certified Public Accountants? According to AIPA, accounting is the art of recording, classifying, and summarizing in a significant manner and in terms of money, transactions, and events which are, in part at least, of a financial character and interpreting the results thereof. From this definition, we can get the words recording classifying, and interpreting. This means that it's done through a process. This process is known as the accounting cycle. We have eight steps in the accounting cycle, namely, transaction analysis, journalizing, posting, preparation of trial balance, adjusting journal entries, preparation of worksheet, preparation of financial statements, and closing the books. In this video, we are going to discuss the first two steps, which are transaction analysis and journalizing. Step 1. Transaction Analysis Before we record and classify the different accounts, we need to first recognize accounting transactions if they will affect the assets, liabilities, and equity of the business. The analysis of transactions should follow these four basic steps. First one is to identify the transaction from source documents. What are these source documents? It will be discussed further later in this video. Number two, indicate the accounts. Either assets, liabilities, equity, income, or expenses affected by the transaction. You need to review the different accounts such as cash, supplies, accounts payable, capital, and many more. Number three, ascertain whether each account is increased or decreased by the transaction. And number four, using the rules of debit and credit, determine whether to debit or credit the account to record its increase or decrease. You need to review the rules of debit and credit. If you still need time to study the rules of debit and credit, Please feel free to click the link in the description and watch my previous video about the rules of debit and credit. Always remember that only financial transactions are recorded and that the amount can be measured. These two conditions must exist in order that a particular transaction is recognized or recorded. Mahalaga na ang transaction ay maaring makapag-increase or decrease the assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, at expenses together with the amount. Kailangan malalaman natin kung magkano. Wala tayong may record kung hindi natin alam kung magkano, for example, ang ibinayad sa payables or utang, natanggap as income, or kung magkano mga equipment na binili ng business. It is explained in the first step of transaction analysis to identify transactions from source documents. Some of these documents are the official receipt or cash receipt. If you've paid for a product or service, then you will also receive an official receipt. In this document, you can easily identify the items purchased, the quantity, the cost or the amount of money you've paid, and even the date of transaction. It is imperative to secure this type of document for the reliability and validity of information. The second one is the charge or sales invoice. A charge invoice is a document used when a service has been rendered, 
but the client will be billed only after a certain number of days from the date of service. It is somehow the same as receipt, wherein the details of the service or order delivered to the customer is shown. However, cash payment has not yet occurred. Wala pang naibabayad na cash si customer after delivering the products or performing the services. In this situation, sales invoice is document that can be shown the amount of some liabilities the business has. The last one is the check or cash voucher. The check voucher is a document used when a check is issued to pay a certain supplier or vendor. Most of the time, a business will pay its creditors or suppliers through issuance of checks, financial information about the settlement of obligations, and receipt from other entities can be harvested through these source documents for reliable record-keeping purposes. After analyzing transactions, Step 2 is all about preparation of journal entries or journalizing. First, let us define journal. It is where the business transactions are recorded chronologically by date and details of each transaction. The journal is considered as the book of first entry, meaning, dito natin inililista lahat ng naging financial transactions ng business. Kung nagbayad, bumili, or nakatanggap ng bayad, dito natin unang inililista. It may have general and special journals. Transactions that are not recorded in the special journals are recorded in the general journal. So what are these general and special journals? Let's first discuss the special journals. Special journals are journals used to record recurring transactions. When we say recurring, yung madalas na maulit na mga transactions like those which are related to the use of cash, maybe cash payments, o pagbabayad, or cash receipts, or kapag may natatanggap na cash, maybe as a result of selling or rendering of service. Some of these special journals are Sales Journal To track all the sales transactions made on credit or as receivable on a certain day. Dito inire-record lahat ng transactions na may kinalaman sa mga pautang sa pagbebenta. Second one is Purchase Journal. This is used to track all purchases that are made on credit from suppliers or as a payable over a given period. Dito naman inire-record lahat ng utang ng business na may kinalaman sa pagbili ng mga paninda o ibang materyales. The third one is Cash Receipt Journal. It is used to track all sales made in cash and any collection of receivables that has been paid in cash. Dito naman inire-record lahat ng transactions na may kinalaman sa lahat ng cash na natanggap ng business mula sa pagbebenta at sa pagkolekta ng mga pautang. Number four is Cash Disbursement Journal. Dito naman inire-record lahat ng transactions na may kinalaman sa lahat ng cash na ibinayad naman ng business para sa mga utang nito or payables. The last one is Payroll Journal. It is used to track expenses related to staffing costs. Dito inire-record lahat ng transactions na may kinalaman sa pasweldo o sahod ng mga manggagawa. All of these are special journals. How about General Journal? All accounts which are not recorded in the special journal are recorded in the general journal. Now, the question is, how to journalize? Generally, journal entry includes the effective date of the transaction, the amount and the specific account from which the transaction will be debited, the amount and the specific account to which the transaction will be credited, the description of the transaction, and any reference such as check number of the payment or voucher number of the transaction. Let us take a look at the following transactions here. 
assume that Teo Enrico established his own party consulting services with an initial investment of 500,000 pesos on December 1. To record this transaction, we are to make five columns for date, account titles, reference, debit side, and credit side. First, write the date of the transaction. Next, based on the given transaction, cash is acquired by the business as initial investment or capital. So we write cash at the top, which is debited by 500,000 pesos, and Enrico Capital at the bottom, which is credited by 500,000 pesos. Kapag debit, nasa itaas, at kapag credit naman ay nasa ibaba. Kailangan din na nakaindent o nakapasok ang account title kapag credit. Then we write a very short and simple explanation that will describe the main thought of the transaction. Like this one, to record initial investment. You also need to write the reference number or account codes from the chart of accounts. This chart of accounts may either be provided in the problem or not. There will be further discussions about the chart of accounts in the next video about posting. Number 2. On December 1, rented office space and paid 2 months rent in advance, 16,000 pesos. Ibig sabihin, ang business ay nagbayad ng dalawang buwang upa in advance, meaning hindi pa niya nagagamit. Kung December 1 siya nagbayad, hanggang January 31 ang bayad niya. So debit, prepaid rent, 16,000 pesos. And credit cash, 16,000 pesos. Prepaid expenses are also assets. That's why if it is increased, it is recorded at the debit side. Cash is also an asset pero nabawasan. In effect, it is to be credited. Number 3. On December 2, Enrico issued a promissory note for a 420,000 peso loan from BDO. The note carries a 20% interest per annum to be paid in full in one year. Ibig sabihin, humiram ng 420,000 pesos ang business sa banko with promissory note na may interest na 20% kada taon. Ang 420,000 pesos kasama ang 20% na interest ay kailangang bayaran nang buo or within one year. So the entry would be cash, debit, and since there is a promissory note, the account to be used is notes payable. This notes payable is credited. There is an increase in cash and an increase in liabilities. There is no entry for the 20% interest since hindi pa nakakaisang buwan o kahihiram pa lang niya ng pera. This entry is used to record the issuance of promissory note to BDO on December 2. For other examples of transactions and their corresponding journal entries, you may refer to your learning modules. And also, I want you to search for compound journal entry because there are transactions requiring two or more accounts in the journal entry. Again, please search and study examples of transactions about compound journal entry. That's all for this video. Please click the link in the description box for the second part of this video containing the step 3 and step 4. This is Sir Jomari Mangiat in a life full of liabilities. Always remember to become an asset. If you don't want to be an asset, don't try to be everyone's liability.